Now, if you're someone who's very mindful of what you eat and you're able to control how much sugar you, you eat and you enjoy it, more power to you. But if you're trying to avoid unnecessary amounts of sugar in your bread and your yogurts, things like that, then the best thing for you to do is make sure that you pay attention to the ingredients and just be mindful of how long the ingredient list is. If you have two jars of peanut butter and one has a shorter ingredient list, it's nine times out of 10 gonna be better for you, okay? So that's, that's kind of how I want you to think about it. Again, I don't want you to worry about every single food that you buy, but being more mindful and educated is super important. All right, number four is probably the most important one uh, to point out, which is look for added sugars, okay? What's really cool about some of the new food labels and the nutrition facts that are coming out today is that food companies are being forced to specifically identify sugar that they add into food as opposed to foods that already have sugar in them. So the classic example with this, and, and one of the reasons why this law got passed, is because yogurt naturally has about seven to eight grams of sugar in the form of something called lactose, which is milk sugar. Now, milk sugar is not very sweet. It's not gonna get you hooked on yogurt, but it comes in the natural form of yogurt. So what food companies realized was is that because this food already has sugar in it, if they added more sugar, nobody would think twice about it having sugar in it, right? Well, lactose sugar is very different in terms of the sweetness of of table sugar or any other type of sugar. So when you see 30 grams of sugar on your yogurt, that's not normal. If you look at plain yogurts that are like really boring and just for health, you'll see that it has about seven grams of sugar in it, all right, and that's normal. So be mindful of added sugar. So on, on a nutrition label, if you wanna look at a nutrition label on something like a, a Coke or a yogurt or something else that is gonna have sugar in it, you'll notice that it'll say, included sugars, which means sugar that the company has added to it even though it isn't naturally there. All right, look for included sugars. If you see a food that has a lot of included sugars, try to avoid it, okay? You don't want foods with added sugars in them. You wanna to try to reduce the amount of added sugars you have. Now again, if you're someone who's keeping, uh, being mindful of your sugars and you're you know, kind of keeping a balance and you're, you're having a balance of sugar and whole food nutrition, more power to you. But if you're just getting started and you're trying to reduce the amount of calories you consume that are unnecessary for your health, unnecessary for your energy, unnecessary for just about anything else, look for added sugars, all right? It's also gonna say included sugars, okay? So what I would recommend right now is if you're watching this video on YouTube, I would recommend that you pause this video, go in your cupboard or go in your refrigerator, look for a yogurt, look for a soda, and just see if you can identify that included sugars label, all right? And that'll help you become more educated on what to try to avoid. All right, number five, buy whole grain over enriched flour, okay? So this is kind of splitting hairs to a sense, but I wanna help people understand the progressional um, benefit of buying a whole grain versus an enriched grain. <clears throat> so when you buy whole grain, what you're buying is a less processed food. Okay, not always, but it's less processed than something like enriched flour, okay? If you have two uh, boxes of pasta and one says whole grain and one says enriched flour, the one that says whole grain is gonna have more fiber in it, okay? Uh, the one that says enriched flour is probably gonna have less fiber in it and it's also gonna have, enriched essentially means the vitamins have been taken out of this food because it's been processed so heavily and we're gonna put it back. Okay, now anytime we put vitamins and minerals back, they don't have the same quality as the food that came with it naturally. So natural vitamins and minerals that come with a food that hasn't been processed are always going to be better for you than enriched versions of the same thing, okay? Now again, I, I wanna point out that this is kind of splitting hairs. At the end of the day, whole grain and enriched flour aren't gonna make a huge difference in your life. But if you're trying to prioritize getting more fiber in your diet in every which way, then look for whole grain versions of your food and specifically look for the fiber content. Some companies will trick you and put whole grain but won't really have any substantial amount of fiber in that food. It might be one gram more than the previous version or the less healthy version. So be mindful of that because at the end of the day, sometimes they're trying to get you to pay more for a slightly, a very small, marginally better product. So when I'm buying 
um, you know, whole grain versus enriched flour pasta. I don't make a huge deal about it. Sometimes I've tried, you know, I've tried these like quinoa and these other um, fiber rich pastas and it's just not the same. So if I want good old fashioned pasta, I'm gonna get good old fashioned pasta. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, <clears throat> but I did wanna try my best to give you a little bit more education on things like, you know, processed versus unprocessed grains, okay?